Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Technician's Corner. Uh, we have a 5500 Dell Latitude here, and we've actually got two issues with this one. There is a uh, fan that's failing as well as the LCD. Uh, here I've just gone around. Uh, the screws have actually already been loosened mostly, so I was just double checking them. And then next, uh, as you can see, I fast forwarded through this because the uh, body just didn't want to release that back panel. Uh, sometimes with these models, they're pretty pretty hard to get to pop off. Uh, but don't worry, as long as you work it easily and, and work your way around, it'll come off. Uh, you may have to just use a little more force. Uh, now here I'm obviously taking the uh, battery connection off of the board so that we don't have power running to it as we're trying to do this. And uh, then there's just the two screws that uh, are for the fan and uh, you want to pop those ones out. And it makes it a little easier to disconnect the actual connector for the fan to the motherboard. Uh, as you can see here, kind of slide that out and then that gives you a little bit of room to get in there because it is pretty tight. Uh, you do want a couple things to kind of push up against the edges of the connector. There's uh, uh, a little like ledge that's there that you can push against. Uh, and then obviously there we go with the new fan and getting rid of the old one. Now, right there, what I'm pointing at, there is a, uh, a little white dot. Uh, sometimes it's black if it's a light-colored connector. Uh, usually it's white when it's black. You want to make sure that's up uh, because that tells you the direction um, that that's supposed to face so that it will slide there into the connector. And then, of course, just make sure that you slide that fan back in the way it came and get your screws put back in. And it's a very simple process. Now, of course, if you needed to do anything else while you're doing this, as you can see right next to the fan, there is the RAM. Uh, that's very easy by just uh, opening up the prongs and you can get that out as well. You could take out the, uh, the heat sink that's there that goes around the fan just by removing a few screws there. Now we need to get this bezel off from around the LCD and uh, it does snap down with clips as well as it is also taped to the LCD so it stays nice and flush and tight. Uh, once you get that up, uh, I'm not worried about the LCD and pulling the tape up, so I'm just popping it all off there. As you can see, I can just run my fingers around and it will pop off. Uh, you may have to use a little bit of force I uh, kind of be strong with your fingers in doing that, but it will come off. Uh, now I wanted to make sure this was flat and we're working on the four screws that are around the outside of the LCD, uh, one in each corner, and uh, they're just simple small screws. Uh, so just spin those out. As you can see, I'm lifting and I'm lifting from the top because as you can see, there is that cable connection at the bottom uh, right there, that kind of gray. Uh, and when you're looking at it in real life, it has a little bit of a silver tint to it because it is uh, there's a little bit of metallic to it. You need to peel that off. There's also a somewhat clear plastic section, which is what I'm digging at right now. And then underneath that, on top of the actual connector, you can see there's actually uh, some, some kind of black or very dark uh, piece right there. And that's another piece of tape that is used specifically to hold down the catch lever. Um, there is a little wire that basically is used as a catch to hold the connector tight to the LCD. Uh, and so you want to peel that off. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes a little harder. That one was uh, a little more sticky. And when it came up, it pulled that wire up. But you need to make sure that releases. Now you can swap out the LCD with the new one. And uh, you know, just be careful when you're packaging it and unpackaging it and moving it around. You want to make sure that it's supported 
or I like to kind of hold it from the top and let it dangle so that I don't put any torque on uh, the side of the screen and cause the weight of the screen to uh, possibly break the LCD and then you know you just have to buy another one all over again. Now when you do this you need to make sure that that little wire catch is folded back towards the tape uh, and then slide that in. It is very thin uh, there are some notches that are there that uh, help to get it aligned. Uh, I went ahead and I just pressed down the little wire there, put that extra tape down, and then fold the main piece of tape down over top of it, and that'll hold it all nice and solid. Now here I'm going to go ahead and plug the battery back in and that is just to do the testing on the LCD to make sure that uh, there's no cracks and there uh, the of course the backlight and everything works. To do that as you can see it lights up and I was pressing the D key so D is in dog hold that down and then press the power button and it will let you go through this solid background type of uh, test that is called the LCD BIST, BISC test and uh, that of course just it runs through the colors uh, twice and then it shuts off as you can see there and then we've got a new bezel to put on here uh, so the advantage of having that of course then if you break the old one when you're trying to take it off which happens periodically because sometimes they do stick and those side pieces are pretty thin and small plastic. Uh, you need to make sure of course you take off the the tape covers as well as the little covers that go over uh, where the camera is. Now you have the one on the outside that's still there. That one isn't going to hurt anything but the other ones on the underside you want to make sure are gone. I like to snap it in from the top first, makes it easier to line up. And then when I go ahead and uh, do the bottom there, I'm going to get the sides, like the first corner, and I'm going to line up by looking down the length of it, uh, just kind of eyeballing it to make sure that it's straight. As you can see there, I was looking down the length of it and once I do that then I can seat it down and the best way for these that I've found is by closing it and sticking my little wedge in here and just putting a little bit of tension on it and sliding it across the opening there and it snaps all of the little tabs in and you want to make sure the end tabs as well as those tabs in the middle are all seated down. Uh, a little hard to see there I know I pulled out a frame uh, but that's basically all it is, is just sliding that little plastic piece, just like there, uh, all the way across. But it's easier to do when you have it closed. And now I'm just looking to make sure that that's all seated all the way down. And then you want to make sure to check around the outside edges on the top and the sides so that those are all seated down as well. Now here I'm going to perform the EPSA test, the diagnostic test. You can get to that by pressing the F12 button after you've turned the computer on. And you just want to tap it until the words up in the top right hand side let you know that it is going to go into that. As you can see, the backlight came on brighter when I plugged it in and you do want it plugged in for this test or it will error out. So you've got the test screen there, make sure all the colors come up and you just OK that and as you can see it is going through 
a handful of uh, different tests there. The little bar there is running across. As the bar runs across, uh, it's testing all the internal components. All right, so there we passed the test. And uh, I know that's kind of hard to see with the glare, uh, but there is the little pass box there. And then all we do is uh, go ahead and shut it off, get the back put on there and uh, make sure it's seated down nicely. Uh, once we're done there, we can uh, just screw the back on and we're good to go. All right, everybody. Well, that'll do it for this episode of A Technician's Corner, guys. If you'd uh, like to check out the social media, it's down below. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, that subscribe button, and that bell icon so you know when I've got new videos coming out. And I'd like to wish you all a good day, and I will see you later. Bye.